gentlemen, it's time for the main event. At stake, the British featherweight title. Tonight's boxing is brought to you by Adam Booth of Haymaker Boxing and Satanta Sports. Introducing first, from here in Belfast, the challenger, Martin McMahon Lindsay. And to say he is the favourite of the crowd would be something of an understatement. Not the betting favourite, but so far as Belfast's concerned, a man ready to be crowned champion. And from Edinburgh in Scotland, the British featherweight champion, Paul Appleby. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first in the red corner wearing blue and white shorts. Weighing in at eight stone and 13 pounds. With a record of 13 wins, five by knockout, and no defeats, the former IBF youth featherweight title holder. From Belfast, here in Ireland, Macman Martin Lindsay. And in the blue corner, wearing white and gold shorts, weighing in at eight stone and 13 pounds, with a record of 14 wins, nine the youngest ever British featherweight champion and the 2008 Boxing Writers Club Best Young British Boxer of the Year from Edinburgh in Scotland, Paul Appleby. Your judges for the contest are Richie Davis from All Hallows in Kent, Ian John Lewis from Gillingham in Kent and Dave Paris from Leeds. Your referee for the bout is Howard Foster from Doncaster.
Baxter in Yorkshire, and he will now give his instructions to the boxers. OK, lads, spoke to you both in the dressing room. You both know what I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both you watch your heads. Good luck to you both. Tough clubs. Good luck, lads. Well, you talk about a bear pit atmosphere. This one is absolutely extraordinary. And I just wonder what sort of effect it's having on this young man. He said he would thrive off it. He said that this would be the fellow under pressure. The man with the overwhelming Second support, the challenge of Martin Lindsay, 12 rounds, it could be fast, it could be furious, Appleby, a terrific young talent, but Lindsay, as we saw in that sensational victory against Gary Matthews when he produced a blistering left hook to finish the talented Liverpudlian, he has got power. Yeah, and obviously Lindsay's got the crowd behind him, John, and that can put 10, 15% on the performance, he really can. He's coming out confident, he'll look for that shot, the one he, that found uh, Derry Matthews' his chin. But Appleby himself, good right hand over the top there, good start from Appleby early. Appleby 7-4 to four on with the bookmakers. Lindsay slightly odds against. And Lindsay's manager yesterday, John Rooney owns the Gleason's gym down in London, he said to me, smart money, get on my man. Well, we'll see. Tommy Gilmore knows a fair few things about boxing, and he believes that in Paul Appleby, he is managing a special talent. But Lindsay started quite well. Slightly the shorter man, Martin Lindsay. Appleby very tall for a featherweight. And the theory that they have is that Appleby is not great going backwards. Appleby was just a little bit sh uh, slow there, John, with that left hand. And Lindsay certainly um, took advantage of that, came back with a right-hand counter. That was good from Lindsay. He's on the ball here. Appleby, he's just got to quicken up a little bit. Every attacking intent, every punch of Lindsay that lands is greeted by a roar from the capacity Ulster Hall crowd. He's fought here before, Martin Lindsay, won amateur titles here at the Ulster Hall and said to me, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being back here. Really is a decent start, this, from Martin Lindsay. Look at this, he's so charged up. The difference, John, as well, is the speed of punch. Lindsay seems to be much more quicker. His reflexes are quicker, and he's actually beating Appleby to the punch. Appleby says that he's been working in the gym, concentrating on defence. That's where he's been trying to improve himself. And that he wasn't really at the races when he fought Eastern Pickering. But you just wonder, he's such a big lad for a featherweight, you just wonder whether at some point in his career he's going to really feel the rigours of having made that nine stone limit. And Lindsay's court will believe that that took it tonight. What an excellent opening round. Good round and a good round for Lindsay. Certainly, yeah, he took that opening round quicker to the punch. And uh, look at that, he was just too club the Falls Road in the west of Belfast and here you see some of the action yeah some good work here from Lindsay on um, John Corners, Lee on. 10 right seconds over the top. that is there two or three shots going in he follows up with the attack of the left hooks better good round for Lindsay he took Seven seconds out. round two so into the second round and the first round given by Richie to Martin Lindsay. Paul Appleby, who 
who's never been down in his entire professional career. Never been down as an amateur. He says he's never even been floored in the gym sparring and training. In a pro since 2006. And you could argue that this is potentially the toughest night of his career. Biggest payday, biggest payday by a long way. You can barely make yourself heard over the bedlam to Cofferty here. Yeah, it's actually a nightmare with the, with, with the, the sound. Appleby's just been a little bit slow to settle into this one. The sense that he needs just to have a, a good stage, a good, put his punches together well for a few seconds to really get himself into this fight. Good left hand from Lindsay. Appleby takes it though, takes it well. It's the, it's the left up jab, isn't it, from Lindsay? That's uh, the one that's been catching Appleby, especially to the body. He's starting to bring it through now as well. Double left up, body and head. Appleby, he just can't get his distance. He's he's falling short with his shots. He's all over the place at the moment, Appleby. This fight was supposed to have taken place a few weeks ago. Lindsay suffered a damaged rib, caused the postponement. But both of them absolutely, they say, as fit as they possibly can be for this. <laughs> Lindsay, degree educated, he's got a degree in business finance. And he'll know that the fat end of the purse is going to the champion. But what an opportunity it is for him and how well he started. He's got to maintain it though, it's a 12 rounder. Well, this is it, and he hasn't been 12 rounds before, has he? But at the moment, he's got the timing right. Uh, Appleby falling short with shots, uh, he's making mistakes, and he's getting punished. Opinion and better round for Lindsay. Corners, 10 seconds. Lindsay said, if I can uh, maintain goals. my game plan, Line three. it's going to be my fight. His game plan has prevailed so far. Third round underway. Paul Appleby, slightly the taller man in the white and gold shorts. John, he's just falling short, Appleby. He's got to quicken those feet up a little bit. Got to step in there, maybe behind that double jab or certainly a long straight jab. But it's the feet, he's got to get the feet into range. He's probably trying to physically impose himself on Lindsay here. There's a wild look about a lot of his work, though. Fight, moving on towards a world title fight. I think it's too soon for both of them at this stage. Take one step at a time. European titles may be more relevant and more realistic. The chance 
shouts of the crowd go up once more. Not exactly supportive of Paul Appleby, as you can perhaps hear in the background. Well, not supportive of him, but I'll tell you what, he's having a better round this round, John. Appleby. Yep, he's just settling into it a bit better, and he's just getting the chance to bully his man a bit, isn't he? Trying to throw him backwards, trying to put Lindsay into reverse gear. Derry Matthews will be watching this somewhere who thought that he'd be getting a, a chance maybe to fight for this title it all went so wrong when Lindsay landed that left hook which was one of the punches of the year Appleby now he's starting to impose himself now on Lindsay coming forward strong on that front foot he's keeping the guard nice and high he knows about that left hook as he's coming in this is all Appleby this round far far better isn't it much better Referee, no nonsense sort of character. Appleby finishing this round strongly. This has been his best round by a distance, and finishing it right on top. And uh, the referee saying, "You heard the bell. Let's fight to the bell and stop throwing punches." The moment it, the moment it sounds. seen Lindsay landing a couple of shots but Appleby good tactics keeping the guard nice and high imposing himself on his opponent coming forward and he was working to the body as well with that left hook there's the one there downstairs wasn't too far away but better work right hand coming up there's one nearly got through there well, Rich has got this two rounds to one in Martin Lindsay's favour at the moment the last one going to Paul Appleby on the back of a one-round blowout of Juan Garcia Martin in his last contest. Martin Lindsay hasn't fought since the Derry Matthews fight back at the rear end of last year. It's better from Appleby. The smear of blood on the face of Appleby. I'm not sure if that might not have come from his nose. There's a mouse underneath the left eye of Lindsay, which is starting to swell up. Could be a factor the further the fight goes, if it starts to affect his vision. I think Not Appleby looks so much bigger as well, John. He looks like he, he could probably go two divisions. Such a big frame. Well, where's that blood coming from? There's plenty of it on the face of Appleby. Good work from Lindsay. And here's a good sustained attack. But back comes Appleby. Could turn out to be something of a fistic war, this one. Look at the crowd trying to urge both men forward. <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay, the chants reverberate around this famous old hall. That was a great burst from Lindsay, it really was. He just seized the opportunity there, stepped in and threw four or five punches, kept the attack going. He has got the faster punches, but now Appleby's coming back into it again. Great round. There are a few shoulders going in. 
through the use of the elbow as well. And Howard Foster keeping a close look. It's going to get more and more physical. This one is going to be a grueling fight. One around the back of the head, and you can't do that. And Howard Foster might talk. Now he's going to get away with a warning, but no question does that again. And there would be a point taken away. Blood, I think, coming from the nose of Appleby. Lindsay, who had a slight black eye before the fight started, which he sustained in sparring. Not four rounds gone yet. What a pace. Well, the bookmakers who made Appleby the seven to four on favourites maybe should have heard some of the atmosphere here beforehand. title on the line his second defense his biggest payday of his career and it's turning out to be a really hard night some really good body shots and he tries to force Appleby onto the back foot. Paul Appleby seriously proud to have been named as British Boxing's Young Boxer of the Year and following some illustrious names, some of the biggest names in British boxing over the years have won that one. Going right the way back to Randolph Turpin when he beat Sugar Ray Robinson. Good right hand there from Appleby. Call Lindsay with a cracking shot. Lindsay's doing the better combination work. The single, better single shots are coming from Appleby. strong and Lindsay forced to cover up Appleby uh, returning the compliment with those body shots yeah it's another really close round to, sc to, uh, to score John good shot from Lindsay there walked straight onto it Appleby yeah. that right hand 
You should have watched that Derry Matthews uh, contest. He's got to keep those hands up as he's coming in. Great roars of acclaim from the Lindsay fans. But it was a close round, and it doesn't matter how much the fans might bellow their applause and acknowledgement of their effort. It boils down to what Dave Paris, Richard Edwards, and Ian John Lewis make of it. Job, job, job. Some good work here. Both boxers, as they were actually approached there. Lindsay catching Appleby coming in. Carrying on with the attack. But Appleby, very, very strong on the front foot. Just keeps coming forward, but he must keep those hands up. There, he just walked onto a shot there. Although he's coming forward, it looks good him actually on the front foot, but gets caught coming in. And then Lindsay trying to put the combinations together. Tommy Gilmore, Paul Appleby's manager, having a close look at how Richie Woodall scoring is at the moment. He's got Lindsay ahead by 48 points to 47. Into the sixth round, nearing the halfway stage of what always promised to be a close fight. Lindsay started like a train, but I've just got the, got the impression that Appleby is starting to find his measure, but that's a big right hand from Lindsay. Really good shot. And I think Appleby felt that. Paul Appleby, let me remind you, a slightly taller figure in the white and gold shorts. Good exchange there, Appleby going to the body with the left hook, but he gets caught himself with the left hook to the chin. But it's the low left hand of Appleby that's the problem as he's walking in, keeps walking onto the right hand over the top. Got to get that left hand up a little bit higher. But Lindsay, he's nice and accurate with that right hand shot. Appleby's face also marking up now, his left eye. His right eye rather underneath that it, it's swelling up a bit. Not surprising really because there's a huge amount of leather been thrown in there. fans of both men living every punch Appleby being waved forward by his corner saying come on get forward push him back be the first frenetic pace just slowing slightly here in this sixth round and no surprise great left up there from Lindsay yeah. Appleby walked onto that one, then follows up with two right hands. Oh, big right hand as well from Lindsay. And Appleby suddenly looks a little bit unsteady here in the sixth round. And a big left hook, and Appleby's in trouble. These are big moments for Martin Lindsay. Is this going to be an Irish victory? Will the odds be upset? He'll certainly believe it now. And just for this moment, Appleby looks there for the taking. He's got to dig deep, and find his way through it to Lava. It's been stopped. Martin Lindsay has won the fight. It is an Irish champion, and the Ulster Hall. It is absolutely bedlam in here as they celebrate a spectacular victory for Martin Lindsay. The night it all went wrong for Paul Appleby, and in the sixth round, the young boxer of the year just unravelled. It was Hooks that did it. And Appleby, quite rightly, stopped by Howard Foster. Appleby didn't like it, he had disappointment on his face, but the celebrations are all Irish. Unbelievable, John, the scenes around us, there's people barging us at the back. It's incredible, but yeah, what a great finish from Lindsay. The right hand over the top, and it was the left ducks that did the damage. We kept saying that Appleby kept dropping his hands as he was walking forward, and he took one too many, and eventually, he cracked, didn't he? It was a great shot but over the top, but it was the left hooks that did the damage that finished him off. And I thought the referee was right there to stop it. The big heavyweight Martin Rogan up there, kissing Martin Lindsay in congratulation. Eamon McGee, I can see his face, absolutely wreathed in smiles. He's at ringside as well. And Martin Lindsay is the British.
as his featherweight champion. Two chants of easy, easy from the crowd, who for me are getting a little bit too close to this ring. Security struggling to cope with it. But let's look again at how it came. This is how the end came, yeah, Richie. Applebee's walking, that's that right hand we kept talking about. That's the one that started. Then there was a left up. Now he's really all steady on his legs. And Lindsay could sense it. He moved in there to finish the job off. Right hand over the top, there he was. He bravely came back up, but we would take He took a big left up. And Lindsay moves in here for the finish. The right thought the referee was going to jump in here. But he gave him every chance. He parts them. And then eventually Lindsay, he's not going to let him off the hook, John, is he? Scenes here, just moving in here for the finish, and there's a big right hand that will come up pretty shortly. That the referee then jumps in, but incredible, really was. There's the right hand, and the referee's in, and that was the right thing to do. Well, they're struggling to maintain order at ringside. Some very, very disappointed Scottish fans. I can see some in tears. Maybe the family of Paul Appleby there. But Martin Lindsay, he fought like a man inspired. There's his manager, John Rooney, hugging him in congratulation. He was utterly confident that his man was going to win this fight. And Gerard Nugent, his trainer, what a good job he's done with him. They got the tactic, they got the tactics spot on. Yeah, he sat on the back foot at the time, didn't he? And then he beat his opponent to the punch as he was coming in. Great combination work, great reflexes. So, a night of Scottish disappointment, but here in one of the most famous old arenas in the country, the Ulster Hall in Belfast, it's the night of Irish celebration, and Martin Lindsay is the champion. And that result now will be confirmed by our Master of Ceremonies and the place, well, they will raise the roof. Ladies and gentlemen, Six seconds of round six. Your referee Howard Foster from Doncaster in Yorkshire stopped the fight, deeming Paul Appleby unfit to continue. Which means